Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and boy do I have a video for you this week. Welcome to the second ever episode of Dish the Dirt, a series in which I talk about kind of the more controversial topics in the plant world. This episode is dedicated to variegated monstera and the various ways that sellers are misleading buyers and doing some pretty shady stuff when it comes to selling monstera variegata cuttings all over the internet. This can be anything from variegated seeds to fully white monstera to even sticks. Yes, sticks. So today, if you are looking to buy a variegated monstera on the internet, no matter where you're looking to buy it from, please, I urge you to watch this video just so that you know kind of what's out there, what's going on, and the things to actually look out for if you do wish to buy one of these plants. A quick note throughout this video, if I use the term variegated monstera, I am talking about monstera albo borzigiana. I'm not talking about Monstera Thai constellation. Just so you know, if I am talking about any other kind of Monstera, I will let you guys know and I will make it obvious. So unless you've been living under a rock the past couple of years, you will know that the variegated Monstera has become one of the most desired, rare houseplants on pretty much any form of social media. So YouTube, Instagram, loads of people on Facebook are kicking about with it. It is everywhere. Everybody wants it. Not a lot of people can get it. I want to start very quickly by saying this plant is not rare. That's why I use the air quotes. It's not rare at all. It is simply in very, very high demand. Cuttings of these plants are pretty much gold dust to be honest with you. A lot of shops actually have waiting lists for these plants. So like huge, huge lists of people wanting to buy these plants. They are so, so sought after. It is without a doubt the most asked for plant that I, you know, ever get messages from, you know, to my shop. Everybody just wants albo, 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 albo. So when it comes to selling cuttings of Monstera, albo, borzigiana, or variegated Monstera, most sellers will usually do one to two leaf cuttings, usually rooted, in you know moss or whatever medium they're going to pot that in and it will be sold to you that way so you will get a leaf of good quality maybe two leaves it just depends on the seller and you should probably have an aerial root if not an aerial root then some sort of root system now this is pretty common that variegated monstera are generally sold and passed out that way you can buy full plants if you can see behind me there in the background that is a full size plant to be honest though they're not very easy to find at all you either have to know a large scale grower or actually be lucky enough to find one in your you know local nursery generally speaking there are a lot of great sellers doing basically the same thing they're selling good quality cuttings of variegated monstera now the problem that happens here is there are just too many people wanting these plants than what any of us can really provide in terms of just you know taking cuttings from a mother plant the thing that i'm sad to find out is people will go to very extreme lengths to get their hands on these plants and it, it's it's crazy before i get into the different traps you can fall into when buying one of these plants or looking to buy one of these plants i want to talk very quickly on kind of like a new thing that's come on the market in terms of variegated monstera and that is what is known as the mint monstera or monstera mint So recently there has been a huge, huge buzz around these new variegated monstera. So the variegation on these monstera is very similar to an Alboborzigiana, it's just not as white, hence the name mint monstera. So the variegation isn't full white, it's not green, it's this really nice, you know, mint color in the middle. And it has quickly become the new thing that, you know, everybody wants to have. So people are actually paying increased prices for these plants because they're, you know, new, interesting and unique. So variegated monstera are what are called chimeras. This means that the genetics that make up a variegated monstera are a mixture of two or more types of cells. Therefore, when these plants become variegated, their variegation can be any mixture of these two or more types of cells, which means by definition that the variegation on a variegated monstera is random. It's really interesting, but when a variegated monstera leaf is formed, there are actually three layers in the leaf that have a chance to possess variegation if that makes any sense so if you take any arbitrary you know section that you want to look at 
on a monstera leaf and you can see on a lot of different monstera leaves there are actually different intensities of that white variegation that we all know and love this can range from a low mint color so you know like quite a dark white slash green color all the way up to a white color so how this basically works is if there is only one layer of variegation to the three layers the three cellular layers in the leaf you will get a really pale green color if there are two layers of variegation that stack on top of each other for any you know section of the leaf you'll get even more of a brighter color and this is the mint color that everybody is currently seeing and is kind of enamored by at the moment and of course, if you get three layers of variegated cells on top of each other, you will get what is known and loved as the beautiful Alba Borzigiana white variegation that we all strive to get. So each new leaf that forms is random. I repeat, it is random. The mint monstera or any pseudonyms or anything relating to the word mint is not a currently recognized cultivar of variegated monstera. If you were to purchase a mint monstera cutting or plant or whatever have you, it could produce more white and become an Albo Borzigiana. That is completely reasonable that that would occur. Similarly, if you are looking to buy a variegated monstera with very sectoral variegation, there is no guarantee that this sectoral variegation will continue throughout the plant's lifetime. This can very, very easily disappear. Now, I know a lot of sellers have increased prices on these sectoral leaves, so half and half, half white, half green leaves, and I think some sellers are calling it a half moon monstera. Just to let you know, it's a variegated monstera. There's nothing special about it. Yes, the variegation is very sectoral, but honestly, you are not guaranteed to keep that variegation in that the way that it is dispersed throughout the plant's life cycle if you buy that cutting. It is very, very reasonable that the appearance of the variegation on the leaves will change over time. To be very clear before I continue, I am not saying that mint monstera or half moon monsteras or anything like that are a scam. What I'm saying is it is reasonable that they will change over time. Not in the way that a pink Congo is definitely gonna revert over time, that is different. I just wanted to let everybody know that so you can make your own decision when you buy these plants. I'm not saying to not buy these plants, I just want you to understand how variegation works in the plant, that it, you know, at a cellular level, it is by definition random. It can change throughout the life of the plant. So if you're happy with that and you accept that, then by all means, go for it. I know a lot of other sellers and collectors will freely say that they think that sellers are doing this in order to basically get more money from people by making these monsters look like the next big thing and that they are different and everything else. I can't sit here and say that that's what's happening because it's the kind of thing where you could easily not know that. If your plant is producing a couple of mint leaves, then you think, okay, that's that's kind of what the plant is now and then you would probably propagate and sell. So I'm not going to sit here and say that these people are scamming people and I'm not even going to sit here and say that you know anybody necessarily knows this is the case with variegated monstera. It is not really something that is talked about. Right now that's out of the way I think it's probably time to go on to the darker things that a lot of people are spending their hard-earned cash on in efforts to get a variegated monstera and it's it's a lot. It's a lot. The things people buy on the internet, wow. I have seen people pay up to 200 US dollars for a stem. And when I say a stem of a Monstera, I literally mean a stem. And I know you're probably thinking, yes, well, you know, people pay for little chunks of, you know, node cuttings and stuff all the time. But if you do not know how Monstera actually grow and you're not necessarily as privy to that, this is where the scamming kind of starts, to be honest. And that ultimately today is what I hope to get into. But let's just take a big old look at the range of stuff you can find on the internet if you are looking for a variegated monstera and I'll be honest it's not really the good stuff <laughs> I have my laptop you probably can't see it in the frame but I have my laptop so what do we have first the first thing I want to touch on really quickly is kind of subpar cuttings I would say I would call them that so cuttings they're, they're kind of viable but they're just a bit shitty. It's not something I would sell, or it's not something I would sell for a price this high. Now, I've seen this happen in the US, on US listings, on eBay and stuff, but I haven't really seen it in the UK, so that kind of interests me, actually. But let's look at some eBay listings right here. 
I'm just looking at this listing very quickly and oh, it's sold. Okay. Check out this cutting. So it's got no roots and it's looking pretty dodgy near that node right there. So my first thoughts when I look at this listing on eBay is, you know, I want to see that node up close because I can see a little bit of black around there. That's not looking too hot. It might be nothing, but let's just take a look anyway, because the seller is charging $99 for this. I want to know what I'm spending $99 on. I want to see this node up close and I can see here that the seller has four different images of this. But as soon as you look through these images and, you know, look for the close ups of the node, if you look very carefully, they have switched around the cutting to hide that really questionable dark spot on where the node is. So I'm now even more suspicious and now I think it looks even more like potential rot to be honest and if there is rot there then that cutting is absolutely useless. It should not be sold, it should be thrown in the bin, it's done. It's just done. Yeah, I'm no, no I'm not liking this at all, at all. To me this is clearly a bit of a subpar cutting and I certainly wouldn't pay for it if there is in any doubt the quality of the node where those leaves are, which I will totally get into later. If there's any doubt, don't buy it. Just stay well away. Oh look, the seller does not accept refunds. Lovely. Here we have another cutting. It has one root, unlike the last thing we just looked at. But have you seen the state of the leaves? If you're selling this cutting for peanuts, so a low price, you know, that's up to you. If you want to pay for a cutting where the node is viable, but the leaves, if you know, you've taken a bit of a hit because it's leaf burn because of all the white or whatever, that's kind of okay. You know, if you accept that, but $130? Be mad, bro. Oh my God, it went for $183, but it's... <sighs> Each to their own. Oh look, it said up for auction is a healthy variegated Albo Monstera cutting. I would kind of argue the point there that that is healthy, to be honest. I, I'm surprised that people will pay that money for something like that, but that kind of highlights the point, right? People will pay for something that is less quality than maybe what they deserve for that price because they think that they're not going to get the offer again. People are actually shelling out money for this stuff. A lot of money as well. I mean, it gets worse, but you know, we'll save that for a little bit later on. I think it's for reasons like, you know, paying all the money for cuttings like that. You either pay the money for a cutting like that or you resort to something else. Now, a lot of people at this point think it's a good idea to try seeds. So you do not need to look very far at all to find the seed scammers. And I am going to use that word this time because that is exactly what they are. They're usually found on Etsy, I think, eBay, sometimes even Amazon, you will see listings for, you know, variegated monstera seeds. So you see these listings for these seeds and you think, okay, well, you know, I've got time. You know, I've spent this long looking for variegated monstera. I've got the time, right? I'll buy the seeds. I'll get them, plant them in a few months. I will have a few, several, so I may get more for, you know, the price of one. I will have several beautiful variegated monsteras and I will be just the proudest plant mom in the world. World, right? Wrong. Let me tell you right now, you pretty much cannot get variegated monstera seeds. It is like a lottery winning low level chance. It won't happen. You're being scammed. Forget about variegated seeds. The variegation in monstera alba bozigiana or variegated monstera isn't even passed to seed. You cannot produce variegated monstera in this way. The only way you will be able to produce a variegated monstera is either buying a cutting as we've already covered or your own, you know, normal monstera shows these mutations, these signs, and you breed it in and you get variegated monstera from your own plant mutating. Those are the only two ways you're going to get your hands on a variegated monstera. This does also include the Monstera Thai constellation, by the way. These also cannot produce variegated seeds like that, okay? The variegation in the plant happens over the plant's lifetime and it is not hereditary. It's worth mentioning that I have seen philodendron pink princesses and seeds produced in the very same way on Etsy and things like that. Same thing, it's not passed down to seed. You cannot get seeds like this from the plant. The only way you can do it is by your own plant mutating or getting a cutting. 
or in the case of pink princess i'm pretty sure they've gone through tissue culture so you can get a tissue cultured plant but you cannot get it from seed so please don't spend the money on seeds i'm begging you please don't to the people that have bought seeds feel free in the comments to let me know what you actually grew because i bet there's some really interesting answers out there most people just grow unrelated plants or the seeds just don't really work at all i think i saw the other day it wasn't variegated monstera as such it was monstera thai constellation but i did see somebody that spent money on seeds for monster attack consolation and honestly it looked like tobacco it didn't even look like seeds the way that i think this scam is kind of it's a known thing a lot of people you know are aware that this goes on but it hasn't really had much attention and i think it's because of the price charged for the seeds so in a lot of listings across you know etsy amazon uh, ebay you'll see seeds listed you know a pack of variegated monstera seeds you'll see them listed for probably about $5. That's a really low amount. And what I think happens is somebody buys, you know, a packet of these seeds, gets them, plants them up, tries to grow them. They either fail or they produce just some weird ass plant that nobody asked for. And the person may try and get their money back from seller. They may report the seller. They probably won't though. A lot of people, because it was such a low sum of money, they actually just put it down to a lesson learned and move on. And for this, reason I actually think a lot of you know the variegated seeds crew that operate on the internet I actually think that's why they're getting away with this because the price is so low people are more likely to ignore it than say spending you know two hundred dollars on something else that doesn't work so for this reason I think it's you know these people have got a pretty good gig going because if you think about all those five pounds the people are pretty willing to spend so I think these people are racking up a reasonable amount of money I would honestly think so just to let you know stay away from seeds no seeds don't buy them you don't need them they don't work okay you're better off going to the supermarket and buying some basil seeds and having a lovely new addition to your kitchen so you can cook with them because hey you never know that's what you might end up with anyway if you buy these seeds who even knows i would love to hear in the comments if you've done this and you've grown them tell me what it was you ended up growing because i'm just so interested to see you know the seeds people are actually putting in these packets and sending them to you or maybe you didn't get seeds at all maybe you just got something really weird like breadcrumbs i'm sure i've heard rumors that people are getting breadcrumbs and other weird things in little plastic baggies. So if you've had that happen to you, please comment below and I would love to hear what you guys have been growing. <laughs> so now we've got past the seeds, let's go to the real hardcore dirty, dirty garbage that sellers are actually trying to sell us. This is incredible, let me tell you. I'm getting a bit more serious now because this is where people really, really, really get taken advantage of. Here you're looking at a post from a, a young lady that bought this thing that you see before you. I will probably put a little bit more, you know, detailed images up there. But they bought this, which um, I don't know if you can tell, it's, it's a stick, basically. She has no doubt paid a lot of money for this and it's, it's a stem. It's a stem. That will literally never ever grow into a plant ever in the post she mentioned she's so proud she has grow lights a humidity dome and she's even using rainwater on it oh it's like it's obvious that she really really wants this plant and she i mean she's gone to the point where she'll buy a stem do you know what i mean at the point of posting this, the, the thing that's really sad is she had no idea she'd been scammed when she's posted this. She was clearly very proud. On this post, people did try and let her down pretty gently on Facebook and say, you know, I would speak to this seller very, very quickly and get your money back or a replacement or something. A lot of people were expressing, you know, pretty major distaste for someone even selling that. So this young lady has been sold what a few people now refer to as a wet stick. My understanding of a wet stick is, well, it's a stick that people are putting in water or moss or whatever, and they're trying to propagate it. I mean, I would definitely describe that as a stick. There, there's no, there's no other word to describe it. You can see here that when the seller gave them this stick, there are a couple of, you know, like root buds on it, and that's it. And you can see a diagonal line there. What has happened is the seller has cut that piece of stem just before the node. There's no way on planet Earth that this plant can even get leaves. Like, it's done. You can even see the mother plant where they've taken a piece of stem from. Like, like how even... Oh. 
God, how even? Man? This is like the worst of wet sticks because some people just sell, you know, a couple of nodes on a stem. This is like not even that. This is like the lowest of the low. So a man named Tyler Thrasher, who is an artist and avid plant collector, did actually speak about wet sticks, the entire concept, in a really big awesome rant on one of his podcast episodes, also titled Wet Sticks. I'm going to leave the links to that and Tyler's Instagram and anything else you might want to look up about him below, so you can check that out whenever you like. It's genuinely a really interesting rant that he gives on this whole subject. And to be honest, this is the podcast that really opened my eyes to this problem because being in the UK we're not really seeing stuff like this it's definitely more prominent in the US and other countries so this really opened my eyes when I listened to this episode and they are they're not selling the plant they're selling pieces of the plant like the stem and they're asking hundreds hundreds and I'm gonna post after I upload this I'm gonna post I just found this this poor woman on Facebook she got duped into spending a hundred dollars on a on a stem that was like an inch and a half long um and she bought it and the ends of the stem were black and she was like can i cut like she posted and said can i cut these and like save the rot what do i do and someone said lady uh how much did you pay for that she was like a hundred bucks and everyone was like no and they had to inform her that the plant they bought wasn't a plant and that it would do nothing. It would never, ever, 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 ever in a million ever years do anything ever. Because it didn't have a node, it didn't have any roots, it didn't have any leaves, it had nothing. It was a wet stick. In the case of the wet stick I just showed you before, I did contact the person that posted this and said to them, you know, have you had a replacement, a refund, you know, an apology, anything? And this person did tell me that they haven't received a refund, an apology or a replacement from the seller. But as soon as I saw stuff like this happening, as soon as I was made aware of it, I immediately decided, okay, now I'm going to step in and give you guys some information on this because I do not want to see stuff like this happening on the internet. It is horrible. So what I'm now going to do is I'm very quickly going to explain the anatomy of Monstera so you can understand and know what to look for if you want to buy a cutting of any kind. So I'm going to use this image as an example this is not my image i will credit this you know both on the screen and below so you know where it is from but this image is taken from an article on leafandpaw.com which actually has a reasonable guide on how to propagate a monstera so if you're interested in that again the link is below feel free to have a look so looking at their diagram here of the various parts of the monstera this is a representation of a monstera plant it's not variegated but honestly it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter Variegated will be just the same. So on here, you have the leaves clearly marked. You have the petiole, which is the stem connecting the leaf to the main stem of the plant. You have nodes on the stem, which are your growth points. And you probably, somewhere on your plant, have aerial roots. So if you look at this image, you can actually see where these aerial roots are coming from. They are coming directly from the nodes. Now, on my Monstera, aerial roots tend to come from the node or maybe an inch past the node, so an inch on either side. So it doesn't have to be exactly from the node, but it will probably be very close to it. Technically, roots can grow on most places on the stem. However, foliage cannot do this. The only way foliage can grow from your cutting is if there is a viable node. If you do not see a node anywhere on your cutting, run a mile. Do not buy this plant. You will not grow anything, literally anything from it. Not everybody, as I mentioned earlier, sells Monstera in the same way. Some people sell a single leaf cutting, some people sell a double leaf cutting. I usually sell single leaf cuttings, but if the plant presents itself in a certain way, I will happily include the second leaf. This actually is an example of where I would do that. So you can see here the two leaves, you can see the two long aerial roots coming from that node. I would cut the plant, if I was making a cutting, I would cut it just beneath that node there, maybe about an inch, and then I would seal it off 
you know, do whatever I'm going to do. So that's one type of cutting you can expect to see. The two leaves or maybe one leaf and an intact node. You should really see it with aerial root at a minimum or just some sort of root that the seller has, you know, propagated this plant and developed a root of some kind from the node because that's also very realistic to do that as well. You don't necessarily need an aerial root. I like to use them on my cuttings because it makes them 10 times hardier. Other sellers will actually sell chunks of stem and there is a lot of debate on whether they is you know okay to do or not i'm not going to comment on it i don't personally do it i don't want to ever do it but a lot of sellers will actually sell you know a chunk of stem it may have roots on it but it will probably have two or three nodes on this stem so that is another thing that you could buy if you're looking for a variegated monstera Personally, I don't advise doing that unless you really know what you're doing. I would honestly just look for leaf cuttings. I think that's your best bet. But if you want to do it, make sure you have nodes on your stem. That is so important. Really, the more nodes, the better as well. I mean, one node, you've got one chance. More than one node, you've got many chances because these cuttings are susceptible to rot. So do be careful there. What you should absolutely not ever buy, you shouldn't see it. Sellers shouldn't even try and sell it is literally a chunk of stem. So if I cut below that last node with the aerial root on and cut it, you know, before it reaches that bottom node and I sell you that little piece of green, I am scamming you hard because that doesn't have any root. It doesn't have a node. What is something like that worth? I'll tell you now, it's worth zero. Zero pounds, zero pence, it's scrap. I don't even think it's worth its weight in compost. Just ignore it. Stay well away. Do not buy anything. Just stay away from things without nodes. You need nodes. You need nodes or you will not have a plant. So if I go back to the screenshot I just showed you now that you know, you know, that you need nodes, you will see very clearly on this image that there is no node on that stem. We do have a little bit of root and I do suspect that it is cut on a diagonal so that the seller gets to keep that node and keep on growing that plant. That tells me personally, in my opinion, the seller knew right there that they were removing that node due to the way that they've cut that. They didn't cut straight across and cut through the node they cut the node so that the buyer would not have it and the seller would keep it. They couldn't even be bothered to provide a node on what is probably the most expensive stem that this poor person has ever purchased. <sighs> and then, then we, we get on to, you know, the real garbage of the entire variegated Monstera world. And I saw this and I just thought, wow, is there any length that people will just not go to in order to make money out of desperate people looking for variegated monstera? And I know what I'm about to show you is gonna cause probably a lot of discussion in the comments, you know, like, well, obviously the buyer is an idiot or, you know, the seller is conning people. There's gonna be a lot of discussion about that. I realize that, honestly, I thought I'd seen it all. I really, I thought I'd seen it all, but clearly I... I haven't lived, clearly, clearly. I, I'm not even gonna bother saying anything other than, why would you sell variegated Monstera soil? What? is wrong with you why would you even try and sell that what on earth what garbage is that that you are serving i don't think i need to say this but i'm just gonna say this to cover all bases don't buy variegated dirt it doesn't do anything it's dirt if anything if anything's grown in there it's probably got a lot of nutrients that have been sapped out of the dirt so there's no even nutrients in the dirt because it's all dirt don't buy dirt okay okay one last thing I wish to cover in this video, and that is something I wish to touch on because I know everyone goes hard for that variegation. The most variegation in your cutting, the better. Now let me tell you something. If I were to look for a variegated Monstera cutting, in terms of variegation, I would probably strive to look for 50-50. So that is 50%, you know, green, 50% white. Whatever form that may take, Generally, I would prefer 50% variegation because you need 
green in your leaves, which is the chlorophyll, in order to make sure your plant grows. Variegated monstera generally grow slower than normal monstera, like they root slower, everything, because they have less chlorophyll in their leaves. While the white parts of the leaves look very beautiful, they don't do anything. They cannot provide the plant with anything the plant needs. If anything, it actually saps energy out of the plant in order to keep these leaves kind of running on the plant and keep them looking beautiful. But obviously we propagate these plants and we keep them because they look so beautiful. And honestly, that's fine. Providing you take good care of your plant and you manage that variegation, that's going to be okay. What you should not do is go full elbow. Do not go full elbow. What do I mean by full elbow? What I mean by full elbow is do not strive to find cuttings of these plants that are mainly white. I know they look gorgeous, guys. I know they do. They look beautiful. Please stay away. For the same reason that you cannot grow the plant if it don't have green. The green is what allows it to photosynthesize and grow and basically function. Because what caught my attention recently is somebody attempting to sell an all-white cutting of a variegated monstera. I say all white, apparently it's about 99% white. So it's probably got a tiny little fleck of green, but it's it's white. This uh, eBay listing was posted by somebody in a Facebook group that wanted to basically bring this to everybody's attention, the same as I'm doing now, and say to people, look, do not bid on this. This is not a viable cutting. And you can see from the image that I'll be showing you, no doubt, the image of this variegated monstera cutting, I'm pretty sure it was three leaves and they were all white. Now, the thing with these three leaves is they're going to die. It's a certainty. I'm telling you, it's a certainty. They're going to die. They cannot sustain themselves. That is why they have been removed from the mother plant, because they're going to die. Now, this, I'm pretty sure it was an auction. And at the time that this person posted this on Facebook, I think there was one bid on the plant. A community member, you know, that either was the person that posted it or somebody else contacted this eBay seller to basically say the viability of this cutting, you, you can't sell this, it's going to die, it will not take, you can't sell this cutting. So I think after that, the, you know, the seller and the person that, you know, spoke to them had a conversation and the seller updated their listing with this I'm gonna call it a disclaimer. You know, I love my disclaimers. They say a few things in this description, but I'll just skip to the good bits. And they say, the two lower leaves are white. The top leaf has a small amount of green to a tip. The top stem has a few green streaks. So they're really trying to sell the green at this point, I guess you could say. They're really trying to big up the green. There are two small aerial roots above the bag roots where the cutting will be taken. This cutting may or may not take, meaning it may or may not survive, basically. So please be aware of this before leaving a bid. We have successfully rooted many cuttings from this plant, which we have had for many years, but never with white to this extent. So you've been taking cuttings for years. You've been propagating variegated monstera for years. I think if you've been propagating monstera for that many years, whether it's one plant or 50 different plants, you should probably know better than to do this, in my opinion. Just my opinion. In my opinion, you should know much better to do this. They do leave, I think they left an, uh, an additional note under you know, this description. And basically the, there was one bid on this plant and they said, you know, if the bidder would like to withdraw their bid, please contact us. But they didn't message the bidder. They just said, you know, contact us. Why didn't they just message the bidder and say, yo, you know, would you like to retract your bid? This is kind of, this is what's going on. They didn't do that. I think they should have messaged. What if the person buying the cutting didn't see the updated description? Then what? So back to what I was saying before, if you're going to buy a variegated monstera cutting, do not go full elbow. It might look nice, but it is a waste of time. If you see full elbow cuttings, whether it's on your own plant, whatever, take them off, put them in a vase. They'll look very beautiful for a while and then they will die. But I tell you what, don't sell them and don't buy them. Now, I know people might say in these comments, look, Kaylee, these sellers might not know what they're doing. They might not realize that, you know, you need a node to grow more variegated monster. You need a node in order to create a viable cutting. You know, these sellers might not know that. Honestly, just going to put my opinion out there and tell you where I stand on it, because why not? But I think 
If you are selling cuttings like that for say $200, you need to take responsibility for what you are selling. And if you did sell that and you didn't know that that's what was happening, say you were the person that cut that note off and you genuinely somehow didn't know, then you need to refund or replace or do something. You cannot turn around after you've done that and refuse somebody a refund or a replacement because you really are scamming somebody if you're doing that. That's not acceptable. I want you guys to take three things from this video. Number one, you cannot buy variegated seeds. It's not gonna happen for you. I know they're cheap. Don't be tempted. They do not work. Variegated Monstera do not seed variegates in this way. It doesn't work. Don't do it. Don't buy it. Save your $5, your five pounds, whatever it is, do not buy it. Do not buy a cutting of any kind, whether it has leaves on it or just, you know, a bit of stem, if you want to do that without any nodes on it. Similarly, if you are selling a little bit of stick, a wet stick, whatever you want to call it, it's got to at least have a node on it. Sellers, send nodes with your cuttings send nodes i do urge you to go and buy a cutting with leaves but if you really really want to get a stem it must have a node on that stem never go full elbow do not purchase plants that are pretty much all white i know they look gorgeous honestly i do but they are not worth to be honest any money because they're going to die it's a matter of time please do not spend your hard-earned cash on all white plants oh and number four you know i'll say it again i shouldn't really need to say it and i don't think anybody needs me to say it but i'm gonna say it anyway don't buy variegated dirt so done so done with this monstera stuff trust me <laughs> i will leave you guys with a question and it's it's not really a debate i just want to hear people's opinions on it so obviously it is the responsibility of sellers who sell you know bits of these plants for a lot of money it is their responsibility to provide good viable cuttings good possibilities for somebody willing to spend you know two hundred dollars to actually be able to have the plant that they're trying to buy and it is viable and that there is a chance for it to grow i know that is their responsibility but to what extent is it the buyer's responsibility to do their research for example you know the cuttings need nodes to what extent is it the buyer's responsibility to also know what they're spending you know two hundred dollars on i think obviously the answer lies in both you know i think if you're going to spend that much money you really need to be sure of what you're buying because a lot of people out there are just getting real real greedy with all these variegated monstera stuff so make sure you stay safe and do your homework and really, that's why I did this video this week. I want to let you guys know this is happening. It's gross. I don't like it because I feel that we just need to look out for each other and prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. And that concludes this episode of Dish the Dirt. Links to anything I mentioned that are relevant, I will link them below. I won't link the eBay auctions or anything of the sort, but I will link things like the diagram of the nodes, um, a lot of Tyler's stuff. You'll find those in the description. While I'm at it, I'd like to say a special thanks to Tyler Thrasher for helping me get together some screenshots to show you guys because they're pretty interesting, really. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot out there, isn't there? Also, thank you, Tyler, for allowing me to use little sound bites of your podcast. If you haven't listened to Tyler's podcast already, please go and check it out. It's really very interesting, very entertaining. I actually quite like listening to it while I'm doing my housework. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today, guys. Please try and stay safe with your money. You know, really find out what it is you're paying for, how viable it is and everything else. That goes for other plants, not just variegated Monstera. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, fantastic Friday, and I will see you next week. Bye guys. Sorry, I'm not gonna just sit here and watch a bunch of people like get conned. Cause I don't wanna see shitty little dingy wet rotten sticks on the market. I wanna see people selling healthy plants. I wanna see people selling healthy well-grown plants. That should be the standard. That should be the standard. That works both. That works better for both parties. Because you don't want to be the person caught down the line being like out of this, someone who sold little wet rotten sticks. Because that little gimmick's not going to last long. Whether it's on my podcast or on someone else's podcast or some whole cartwheeling through a field with a banner that's calling you a con artist, somebody somewhere's going to bust your ass. That's what's going to happen.
So it's me or somebody. That's it. 